Well, welcome to Thought for the Day. I'm encouraged this Monday morning. Um, for some time now, Terry and, and, and I have been talking one way or another about the importance of meeting together to encourage one another. And what I saw after the service, or really as part of the services yesterday, is an outbreak of encouragement amongst us at St Albans. It started with, with Usha. Usha, uh, many of you know, uh, posted on one of the WhatsApp groups uh, towards the end of the um, first service. Well, I think maybe even uh, uh, during, during the sermon, uh, a, a, few, a few verses that picked up on something in the sermon, so really found the sermon really helpful, this might contribute something towards it. A number of us saw that between the services, one of those was Mandy, and so at the 11 o'clock service she asked whether she could read out what Usha had posted, and that was shared as part of the 11 o'clock service, so you might, might have seen that in the newsletter. But it wasn't just Usha. After one of the services, someone told me how they'd uh, been praying for something very specific, and God had answered their prayer. Uh, there were other uh, messages uh, going around about how people had, had enjoyed the services, enjoyed different aspects of them. Uh, one person mentioned that on a phone call, and, and I think said, could, could you pass that on to, to those who were involved? So all sorts of bits of encouragement were happening. There were, there were thanks to people who had taken part in things. Uh, thanks to Usha for posting it. And it felt like we were starting to be a community that puts into practice what we were reading in Hebrews 10. Uh, don't give up meeting together, but encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. And there's lots of ways to do that, aren't there? You can do that with a phone call, you can do it with an email, you can do it with a, a poster on WhatsApp. Now obviously we need to be careful it's so important that encouragement is real. Uh, I don't. Let's not become one of those uh, groups of Christians that that just shares sort of cute pictures and stories from the internet. Most of which, when you start to inspect them, turn out not to be true. Jesus said, "He is the way and the truth and the life." Let's be people of the truth. Let's let's share things that are really happening in our lives that we know, not just stories that sound good. And encouragement doesn't always have to be entirely good things. We're told to speak the truth to one another in love. Love, love sometimes means telling people when things were not as good as they could be, challenging them to live their lives for Jesus better, challenging them to, to excellence in all that we do for the Lord. But even that I think we can do in a right and a wrong way. Uh, it's easy if something was wrong to just make sure everyone knows it's wrong. We, um, send that email, copy a few people just so that, so that everyone can be involved. And it's done for the best of motives. But actually that spreads it out. Uh, and if something has gone wrong, and you get five or six emails, each, co each copied to six or seven people, suddenly 30 people are caught up in, in that and, and others are commenting on it. And, and it just be gets an energy of its own. If you see something wrong, something that someone's done wrong, how about a different approach, which really goes to them one to one, one, one to one, much better face to face or with a phone call than with a message. And just as that, has anyone um, has anyone uh, mentioned to you about that? If so, yeah, a couple of people have. That's fine. You just leave it. You don't need then to have your own say, because you know you know it's been heard. You know it's been been dealt with. So as we go into this strange season, this season when we really don't know if we're going to be able to meet together or not, there's talk of, of well, there's new restrictions for today, from today, they don't apply to church, but there's other uh, snippets in the news about possibility of, of people being asked to shield again. We don't know what's going to happen to the virus. We don't know what we're going to have to do to, to love one another by avoiding uh, danger of passing it on. It may not be possible always to meet physically, but however we meet, let's, let's continue to encourage one another. Usha showed us yesterday that you don't have to be there in person. She was still at home, she was watching online, but she could post something and that could be picked up and used and used to bless many people. You don't have to be there in person to encourage. Even if you're watching it afterwards, even just reading a sermon in a newsletter afterwards, it's still possible to make a phone call 
to let people know, to, to maybe to pass on to somebody that that was, that was really helpful and you've been challenged. Let's be a community of encouragement. And if you're watching this and you're not part of uh, St Albans, if you're part of another church community, why don't you start an outbreak of encouragement in your church community? And if you're watching this and you're not part of a church community, why not join one? Join one and infect it with the incredible positive virus of encouragement. So I hope this has encouraged you and I hope uh, that you will encourage others uh, on this beautiful Monday morning. God bless.